Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of BBD versus Christopher Van Meter. That's me. Yep. <laughs> uh, so we have CVM here. Yep. And uh, we're we're going to be playing something different from our normal normal take, like certainly a more uh, recent format. Would you say? Like. Yeah, it's uh, it's not very old. It's not very stale. Um, uh, it's, it's pretty masterful, in my opinion. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a format that a lot of people like to marvel at. That is true. That is true. Um, so, we are speaking of modern, actually, for those of you that I thought skipped the deck text and went, huh? I thought we were playing vintage. You have a vintage deck? Yeah, are you? Oh, man. <laughs> My deck's not very good against Black Lotus. All right, well. Well, uh, we had a lot of people in our video last week uh, had asked for modern, um, so we are going to appease the masses and play some modern. Uh, I'm fairly new to it. BBD's played it quite a bit. Uh, it's a great format. Uh, it's being pushed pretty hard by Wizards. Um, so we are you know, looking to give people the content that they want. So we are battling some modern today. Yeah, I've, I've seen the comment many times in Star City that Star City doesn't care about modern, which actually just isn't true at all. So we're hoping to debunk that with uh, some, some modern mastery here today. But. A absolutely. Now we do have a, another little, little side game that we're going to play to determine who gets to choose to play or draw. Uh, we played, you know, Lobster, tiger, lizard, lizard in the past. Um, uh, we've got some little different for you. This is a, a game that actually anybody can play. Um, it was taught to me by one of my friends. Don't remember who they are, but if you remember who you are, thank you. Uh, so it's the game starts. I have one of each basic land, and so I'm going to masterfully pick one of them and lay them face down in front of me, and then BBD will have three chances to try and guess what it is. Now, when he guesses wrong. I will, you know, show him that he guessed wrong and lay the one land face up that he called for. And so the trick is to try and figure out which land is he not going to pick in three chances. So there's a couple of different strategies you can go. A lot of times I like to just random it because uh, I'm fairly easy for people to get a read on, I guess, because <laughs> I, I lose a lot when I actually choose one. Uh, but I'm actually going to choose one, and I'm going to go with this land here because I think that it is a good land. Interesting. I think it's a bad land, and I think it's a swamp. That is incorrect. Uh, not a swamp. All right. See, I, I feel like the odds are in my favor in this game. I get three guesses, and there's only there's five. Like, but I actually feel like because of just how terrible I am at this kind of game, <laughs> it's actually just stacked against me. Uh, planes. Ooh. Ooh, wow, okay. That's that's brutal. See, now you're down to a 33%er. Uh, yeah, I am down to a 33%er. I love me some 33%ers. So, oh, man. Island. Ooh, that is incorrect. Dang it. Go to the forest. BBD loves him some Arbor Elf and Avacyn's Pilgrim, and I successfully leveled him. Yep, I, I thought that you would... Not choose forest because I thought you thought I would pick forest. So, guess you were just like fourteen levels ahead of me there. <laughs> I'll go first. All right, with my affinity deck. It seems to be very fortunate. And I think the draw is where you want to be for affinity, <laughs> but don't quote um, me on that. Now this hand isn't like too incredibly explosive, but I still feel like it's good enough to keep here on the play. I do have you know some extremely powerful cards some enablers, um, and I got lands in my 16 land deck, so I'm going to keep. All right. Um, have you ever watched uh, Adam Prozac's stream before? Oh, the that's the where Clap Keep, right? Close. It's, oh, uh, man. It's actually Snap Keeps. Oh, so yeah, that's, that's what we're doing for this one. Uh, this is a pretty good hand. Um, yeah, that's, that's about all I'm going to say about this. All right. Has, has what we want in this matchup. Springleaf Drum, and I'm also going to cast this Opal now. Sure. And I'll pass. Whoop. All right, we're going to draw a card. Um, now, uh, I'm going to lead with this land here so that I can get a basic with this if I need to. And uh, since we have two of these, like it's, it's generally better to lead with a land like that. Uh, so I'm going to lead with the March Flats, and I'm going to crack it, go down to 19. I'm going to get a basic swamp and play Deathrite Shaman. And I will be done after that. That is a Deathrite Shaman. Okay. 
You know, one of the advantages of this black green deck is that you actually can fetch basics and not take a million damage off of your like fetch shock mana base like a lot of the other decks. I definitely agree. I mean, that's just an advantage of playing a two color deck in general now. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we got the basic island. Wow, basics all around. Just, Lucky. Just, just everything I ever wanted it to be. Had had it. So I have a couple different options, um, and I think that. Um, So I can just I can play this into this, um, but I kind of would rather just hold on to this for now. So I think that I'm just going to cast my Arcbound Ravager. Okay. I wish this wasn't a basic island. Um, and then I'm actually just going to actually it's fine. I think I'm I'm I am gonna cast this now. So I'm gonna cast the cranial plating. And then I'll pass the turn. Okay. Alright, so we drew that. Um not a bad card by any stretch of the imagination. No, I I just want to say that I, I contemplated not casting this to be able to put a counter on my Nexus if you happen to like have a removal spell for the Ravager. Right. But I think just getting getting this into play now is more important because then, like, if you you know tap out, I can just hit you with the Nexus with a plate on it. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's going to be better. Yeah. Um, I think I think the line for us here is to just play this. Um, we could also consider playing this, but I don't think that. Uh, that really offers us any advantages anyway, like based on the way this game is going. Um, we're not really, we don't really have a lot to get use out of out of this. So I think what we're going to do is uh, crack verdant catacombs, drop to 18. We're going to get a basic forest and cast a scavenging ooze. Um, and now we have a blocker for his ravager, uh, which is important. Um, we have two blockers, I should say, for his Ravager, which is important, so. And Scavenging use can actually grow if, if enough creatures are dying. Like, if he starts sacking out to his Ravager, we can start building up our ooze. And we're just going to pass the turn after that. Okay, so that was definitely an interesting draw. Um, so we have a couple different options. Uh, we can just cast this, um, or we could cast this and hope to draw into to something else, which I think is going to be our the best bet for us, because um, any zero mana guy or another land just you know puts us back where we are, but we're plus some cards. So I think I'm going to start out with a thought cast. Sure. And we'll draw two. Okay. Now that was actually a pretty decent draw. So I think that our best bet here is to, to wait a turn. So I think that I'm just going to I'm going to cast a Steel Overseer. Okay. And then I will pass the turn. Now I have an effect in your upkeep. Okay. So in your upkeep... Well, he doesn't have hate. Oh, you're just adding mana. Okay, I see. Uh, we're going to... Kill you, Deathrite Shaman. Oh, that makes me sad. I know we don't have haste. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't really... Like, we could use Deathrite Shaman on his thought cast in response. Um, but that kind of leaves us vulnerable. Like, depending on what we draw, we don't want to waste the mana. And, like... The two, those two points of damage I don't think are going to... Like, they could matter, but I think it's more important to leave ourselves 
like available to cast stuff depending on what we draw. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna let that occur, and now we will draw for turn. Okay. Um, so because we drew this card, we're definitely going to cast it. Uh, since this turn, our, our, our play is just, this turn is just going to be playing this, and then playing this, and then using our scavenging use, depending on what occurs. So, um, yeah, so we're going we're gonna to just take that line then. Play death rights, and pass the turn. Okay. So now I, I still have to worry about dismember here. The whole the whole point of doing that play on his upkeep was to try to get him to utilize his mana to a point where he'd be tapped out. So he still has mana available for dismember, so I have to keep that in mind um, with how I decide to go along with the rest of this turn. So So I think that I am going to Cast an Edge Champion. Okay. And then I will... Uh, equip. Okay. The cranial plate in here. Okay. And then I'm going to... Play an Opal. And I'll pass the turn. Uh, end of turn, I will eat a death right shaman and gain a life. Yep. Go to 19. And I get a counter on my ooze. Draw. Um. I'll go ahead and play Garrick Relentless. And I will use him to fight Steel Overseer. Alright, I will respond. I'll activate Steel. Uh, I will activate my Ink Moth Necklace. Um, sure. And then I will activate Steel Overseer. Alright, so I have to think here. Um, I think we just have to let this happen, uh, as is. So, yep, that happens. All right, so this, this, and this. Okay, and, and this guy too. Yeah, and this guy too. Now I have an option, like I can sacrifice the Overseer to my Arcman Ravager, but that keeps his Garrick around. Um, however, I would rather him just making two two wolves or fighting creatures for no reason than making Death Touch wolves. So. I'm going to sack to the Ravager. Okay. And with that, I will simply pass the turn. Right, well, this is not going to bode well for you, my friend. Is this second cranial plating? Yes, it is. So lucky. One, two, three, four, five, six, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I think I can just kill you. Maybe. Alright, so we're gonna cast the cranial plate in. Sure. And then I'm gonna equip the champion. Sure. And then we're gonna go to combat. Uh sure. And I will attack you. Okay. I will not declare any blocks. Two, three, four, five, six. 
So let's see. There's currently there'd be seven artifacts. Yeah. So that's seven. So that's seventeen total damage. Yeah, you're not dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess I take. Yeah, I guess I take seventeen. Two. Yep. And I'll pass. I will exile a Verdant Catacomb. Um, so this play is, is actually pretty greedy. I think that I should I shouldn't have I'll activated the Nexus. Oh, it's still Overseer. But we'll see what happens. And gain a life. Go to three. So yeah, we're pretty much dead unless we draw like a Maelstrom Pulse here uh, for cranial plating. Uh, even then, we're still not in great shape, but we're definitely better off. Um, draw. That is not what we need, so yeah, we're just dead. Did you have Dismember? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I had Dismember, um, so I want to, actually, before we end this game, I just want to talk about this a little bit. So I had Dismember, and, like, a lot of people are probably wondering why I never cast it. And the reason is that at any point in time, if I try to dismember like his Ravager or his Steel Overseer, well, he can just can't dismember the Overseer. But the the oh, Steel Overseer. Oh, you, you point, uh, yeah, champion. Yeah, you point like, the champion. So I just imagine. Well, champion. I meant where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the Overseer. Yeah. So if I ever try to dismember like the Overseer or the Arcbound Ravager, he can just activate his Ink Moth Nexus, sack every everything on his board to make his Ink Moth Nexus a six six. And, be, and like, just kill me in two turns with Ink Moth Nexus. And since I don't have another way uh, to deal with that, including, like, even another Dismember wouldn't be enough to deal with a 6-6 Nexus, mm -hmm. I, I can never use this like that. I have to try to uh, build a board situation where he has to he tries to go in on his Nexus with Ravager, and then I Dismember in response. Yeah. So that's, that, that's why I never pulled the trigger on this member, and... Yeah, just for an ex explanation. But yeah. yep, that was game one. So we'll go into game two, and mm -hmm. hopefully it'll be a little bit better for me. Like, and I definitely think that I want to mention that the last turn activating the nexus, I definitely just shouldn't have. Yeah, but there's I, no need to because like, like I, I want to be able to protect this from a Liliana with my ink bomb nexus. Yeah. So like, it didn't kill you. It didn't get you. Like, it, it got you low, but it was just like I traded two damage for the chance of getting blown out, which is just <laughs> completely incorrect. So, like, a lot of times in pre-board matchups are going to go like that, where if he just draws the right cards, like, if he, he, drew, he drew, like, basically he has eight cards that matter, um, or seven cards that matter, the three Etch Champions and the four Cranial Platings, and yeah. if he draws those cards and I don't have a way to deal with them, then I, I'm just, the game. I just can't win. Like, so, game ones are kind of like a dice roll, kind of a crapshoot a lot of times, where I, d I don't really have, like, a lot of options... Uh, him, him killing my Deathrite Shaman actually um, really set me back, so. Alright, we are back for game numero dos. I get to be on the play this time, right where I like it. And CDM gets to be on the draw. Right where I hate it. Yep, exactly. <clears throat> uh, okay, uh, so this hand is not exceptional. Actually, it's kind of bad. Um, I don't think we're going to send it back, but it's a little awkward, especially with this card coming to play tapped, kind of ruining our curve. But yeah, at the same time, like I'm not going to I'm not going to ship this hand, so I'm not a huge fan of it. But the the hope is that this like really uh, throws him off. So, um, and I also realized while we were shuffling that I could have just sacrificed the Moxel Hole to my Ravager. When yep. I played the second one last game. So it wouldn't have killed you, but it would have made me look less stupid. Um, <laughs> Which is the most important thing. So <laughs> Definitely. Now, this hand is it's pretty stains, to be honest. Um, but I do have um, like this card, which is the only reason I'm even contemplating keeping the hand. And I think I'm going to just because my deck is just full of such high-power, awesome magic cards 
that I, I think I'm going to keep this hand and see what happens. Some of the most powerful cards in Magic's history. Like Vault Scourge. I guess I don't get to draw on the first turn. No, no, no. I'm so used to being on the draw because I'm so used to not losing. I'm just kidding. Right, uh, well, I will Inquisition you. Thankfully, that's not a Thought Seize. <sighs> See, it's probably a Thought Cast, I'm assuming. Okay. Uh, wow, that's uh, an interesting <laughs> one. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a bit, it's a, quite the stains. Certainly on the stainier side. All right, I guess I will write that one down. Glimmer Void. Uh, Citadel, two Scourge, pretty easy one to write down actually. Two Thopters, and a Thought Cast. Uh, I will take your Thought Cast since you cast it for one. I can get it now. All right, so I, I have an option of Vault Scourge or Ornithopter here, and I think the choice is. Um, so this was my whole plan to give a hand. It was not vulnerable <laughs> to Inquisition of Cuslack. I think I have to take Vault Scourge just because it actually can do things. Because unless he draws like something that really takes advantage of like double Ornithopter on his first turn, and I'm not even sure what that could be necessarily. Uh, I think that we're better off just taking the creature that actually has power that can actually like put pressure on us since our hand's like a little on the slower side. So yeah, I'll actually take a Vault Scourge and. Uh, that does make it, yeah. Like, he can cast everything on the first turn anyway, so, you know, whatever. Well, now I can. Yeah, now I can. Yeah, now I can. Go for it. All right, so we got some live draws here. I will play this Darksteel Citadel. Okay. Uh, a couple of these homies. Yep. And that Vault Scourge taking some damage. All right, you are down to 18. And then I will pass the turn with my formidable army. All right. I am definitely scared. All right, we drew that one, which obviously was not where we wanted to be. So, uh, Treetop Village. Another of Castle. <laughs> no, Treetop <laughs> Village, go. Uh, we don't have the most exciting of starts here. All right, so, I mean, neither do I. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't draw, like, something that really punishes us at this point. All right, so, well, Glimmer Void... I'm going to cast that podcast now. Uh, sure. And I'll draw two. Hoping he kind of bricks off on that. And I'll battle for Uno. Uh, 19 all. Lifelink. Big and game. And then I will pass the turn. All right. Hopefully his hand is super, super bad. Uh, so we have a couple options here. Basically, it's either of these two, and I think we want to just go with this. It's just the, the bigger threat right now. So uh, we'll go with old Tarmogoyf and then play another Treetop Village and pass it back to you. Let's see here. Looks like we have Sorcery, Creature, Artifact, so he's a 3-4. I wonder if do we have the... We had a Tarmogoyf dice here somewhere. Uh, we can just use this. Yeah. He has 3 power, so... All right, so I'll take my turn. Oh, man. This is so bad. Yes! <laughs> So bad. Well, thought cast. No. Come on. I can't complain with a thought cast. I mean, if you saw the rest. <laughs> oh, it got even better. And better. Oh, that wasn't too terrible. All right, so. Must really suck to almost recall yourself. Yeah. So we'll play a land. Mm -hmm. Blink Moth is a good and one. And another land. And an edge champion. Yeah, that's perfectly good. And then we'll attack for. I go to 18, you go to 20. Yeah. We'll see if I'm complaining about. You know, I, mean, I really want you to inquisition me next turn. <laughs> so, and then I'll pass. Uh, you can attack me with treetop villages. Sure, I certainly can. Uh, play a tectonic edge. Oh no. Um, Really no value in attacking with Tarmogoyf since he can just block with Edge Champion and lose nothing. Uh, we will play a Garrick Relentless though. That's kind of cute. And... So we can fight an Ornithopter and keep our Garrick flipped. Um, our Garrick is 
basically, if he wants to kill our Garrick next turn, he can. So for that reason, it's probably better that we fight a Vault Scourge in case we draw something like a Maelstrom Pulse, for example. Um, we can get both those Ornithopters if we want to. So yeah, I'll go ahead and fight the Vault Scourge. So you go to 21. I'll gain a life. Yep. Garrick flips over to his Veil Cursed Alter Ego. And um, we'll pass the turn. All right. Uh, awesome. All right, so I'm going to animate that guy. Sure. And we will send him at the Garrick and this guy at you. Okay, so Garrick dies, I go to 17. Yep. Tarmogoyf grows. And then I'll play an Ink Moth Nexus. Okay. And then I'll pass the turn. Draw. Alright, so that was a pretty bad draw. Um, I think we have better ways to utilize our mana this turn. Um, so I, I think our line is is like these two cards. Or perhaps yeah. Well I think the yeah, the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna attack for four with Armagoyf. Seventeen. So he goes to seventeen. And I think we just play this and pass. Um and, yep, we're going to tap like this. So we don't want to play this because, like, we want to use our mana differently this turn. And same with this. Like, this doesn't really affect the board right now. So, you know, there's, there's really no reason to throw that out there. I'd rather hold open for, like, this or basically, like, Ooze's ability or anything else we can do. So I think this is a much better line. So, so I, I, I don't think that attacking with this now um, really gives us much value, um, since it's going to be better for me just to hold it back to block. But I am going to activate both of these. Sure. And we'll go to combat. Sure. And I'm going to send both at you. Is that right? That's not right. I will actually just attack with this, even though, yeah, even though I didn't need to activate that guy. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'll just attack with the Ink Moth Nexus. Okay. Uh, declare zero blocks. And I'll, I'll try and pop it. Um, okay. We'll take two poison. I'll play a land. Okay. And then I'll pass. All right. I will eat a Vault Scourge at the end of your turn. Sure. So I go to 18 and get a counter on Scavenging Ooze. Draw. All right. That's a pretty good draw. Um, That definitely gives us a number of pretty solid options for our turn. So we will go ahead and I think we begin by just attacking. Basically, we're not blocking his edge champion anyway. And he has no other ground creatures, so there's no reason to not attack. And he doesn't have enough power to kill our scavenging use, so or or our tarmogoyf, so we're just getting in damage here. So we'll go ahead and send with both. I'll block the tarmogoyf. Okay, so you take three. Yep. You go to fourteen. 
and then I'm going to cast a Death Rite Shaman and pass the turn. I don't think we're turning off his Glimmer Void this game. <laughs> Good luck. All right, so I'm going to activate both of these. Sure. And I'm going to attack you. Okay. Uh, I declare zero blocks. No thanks. Um. We'll go ahead and Tectonic Edge, one of them. I'm going to blow it now because we have Death Rite able to use mana, and it also pumps our Goyf. So um, even uh, though he... I'm going to pump this one. Yeah, he gets to pump the other one, and we get to, we take the same amount of poison regardless. We uh, don't lose anything by like not having that land, really. And we force him to tap his mana. Let's play a Mem Knight. Okay. Pass. Um... So now I, I don't want to eat. Actually, I think I still do. Although that actually takes artifact out as well. It's kind of awkward. Um, part of me wants to eat the Vault Scourge with Scavenging Ooze to grow uh, our Ooze since, like, we no longer can attack with Scavenging Ooze into, like, Memnite Edge Champion uh, with the 3 3 Ooze, but. Basically, by growing our ooze by two, we also shrink our Tarmogoyf. So there's definitely a consideration to be had there. But I, I feel like more artifacts are probably going to hit the bin eventually. So yeah, I guess I will go ahead and exile your Vault Scourge and gain a life. So that actually removes two from Tarmogoyf, unfortunately. But yeah, we'll pump our dude. Draw. Okay. Can get behind that. Let's go ahead and play Liliana of the Veil. Vale. And we're going to go ahead and make you sacrifice a creature. While not super impressive, it does... Uh, he gets to like sack a random ornithopter. It does put a creature, another creature in the yard, for our, like our ooze and our goif, and it does grow our goif back to a five. So um, now, now we're going to connect for more damage. Essentially, I, I will block the goif and take four. Okay, so you go to ten. Yep, and that's it for me. Don't cranial plating me, bro. I mean, you probably have to dismember, otherwise you would just be dead. Got all these lands. All right. I may be able to land my first victory over CVM. All right, so I'm going to activate this. Sure. And I'll send it at you. Uh, declaring zero blocks. I'll attempt to pump it. Sure. I go to six poison. And then I'll pass the turn. Okay. Uh, we get to eat his ornithopter, but again, that shrinks our goif and actually doesn't accomplish anything. So we will just simply untap. Um, draw for turn. So that turn is uh, actually is a little interesting for me. I could have attacked the Liliana um, and killed it, but it leaves me vulnerable to taking more damage next turn than I'd like. I also could have traded a point of poison at you to kill Liliana with the Ink Moth Nexus, or Blink Moth Nexus, but I 
just don't feel like it's very relevant. Right yep. now. <laughs> you have a two. You have a two point or two turn clock with uh, Nexus at the stage. So yeah. uh, we will go ahead and both discard a card with Liliana. All right. Thoughtseize. Mox Opal. Okay. Um, now with Opal in the yard. There's still no creature, so we still shrink our Goyf if we eat that Ornithopter, but um, we will go ahead and send on in with both of these again. So he's at 10. We want to try to kill him as quickly as we can. All right, so I'm going to block here and here. Okay. I'm Knight dead. Um, we could play this, which might actually be the right line. Yeah, I think it is. We're at 19 life, so we're not too worried about our life total. And... I think we want to start using Deathrite Shaman like every turn, so uh, I'm going to play Scavenging News, tapping both treetops, so I can leave open, leaving open the black ability to exile his thought cast for a couple points of damage if we need to. Um, and then we were going to pass the turn. Okay, so. So there are a couple of different options. I can either kill his Liliana this turn or leave it open and put him on a one turn clock. Obviously Dismember is, like I just can't beat a Dismember at this point so I have to play like he doesn't have it. Um, but I just have to figure out if I am dead next turn or not. So, I'm at 10, so I'll go to eight, six, yeah, that's unfortunate. All right, so I can just hit him for one poison and then leave back this to block. And I can block this, this, and I'm at six. Well, you'd have to have the land to be able to do that. But I'm still dead if I don't leave this back. Alright, so we will animate. Mm -hmm. I'll attack you. I go to seven. Poison. And I will play this just in case it's relevant. The old drum. And then I will pass it on. All right, I'll exile a thought cast from your graveyard. I'll go to eight. Okay. So hopefully we draw a land here, which we did. Excellent. Uh, land really turns on a lot of our things. Um, he's currently at eight. couple things we can do. Uh, one is use this um, to fight his ornithopter and then make him sacrifice, sacrifice a creature afterwards, in which case he probably has to sacrifice Ink Moth Nexus, or he's dead, which actually he might not actually be dead then. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, he'd actually be not dead. Yeah, so that, that seems like a bad line of play. Uh, the other line is we send a Treetop Village in along with our other two guys. And... 
that might, let's see, he would block, he would take three, seven, eight, nine, he's at eight. Yeah, so that seems like the right play. So uh, we'll go ahead and make you sacrifice a creature. Dead Ornithopter. Uh, we will activate Treetop Village and attack. Um, yeah, we'll attack with all these. There's no point in attacking a Deathrite Shaman because using it to activate an ooze is just the same as attacking. So. I'll activate. Okay, so now we have a decision to make here. Um, I think if we dismember his Nexus, then let's see, he has Edge Champion to block our Tarmogoy. From he's taking four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If he has a Galvanic Blast and draws Cranial Plating, we die, but um, I guess those seem like unlikely odds. I don't want to give him an extra turn if he doesn't have anything, so we will go ahead and sack Marsh Flats. Puts me down to 18. Uh, I'm actually going to get Overgrown Tomb. Our life total is pretty high right now. We might as well get something that both activates our treetop villages and um, that we can fetch with March Floods. So I got a 16. And I will dismember Blink Wall Nexus paying four. And I'm dead. I just have another Mox of Wall. Okay. So I drew a Thought Cast and the Champion <laughs> and all mana. Yeah. After that Inquisition. So again, we had to dismember this entire game, but I didn't need to dismember his Ink Moth Nexus because we were not actually under uh, pressure from it. At some point in time, it might have been right to do so just to play around him drawing a Ravager. But. Uh, we were kind of winning the race, so I think we were okay in that regard. But uh, we're going to go to sideboard now and see how those games play out. All right, we are back for sideboarding. Um, I'm going to be bringing in Infest and Fulminator Mage. Fulminator Mage is basically just to fight his Ink Moth Nexuses and Blink Moth Nexuses, which, other than Edge Champion with a Cranial Plating, is like one of the, the main way I'm going to lose is to his lands. So uh, bringing in Fulminator Mage to, to deal with those, and sometimes I can just get him too if he keeps like a hand that's reliant on like a nexus to tap for mana, I can just try to get him. So these come in for that, and then Infest is like an actual way to kill Edge Champion. So Infest comes in mainly to kill like all his other guys, which also helps to set up our Lilianas to be able to kill like other stuff too. Yeah. And as for what I'm cutting, like Thoughtseize is not terrible against him, but uh, especially when we're on the draw, like it's just a lot of times too slow. He already unloads his entire hand before we have a chance to cast it. Uh, Inquisition's not that great either, but I, I like it a little bit better because we're not taking damage and there's very few cards that we get punished by having Inquisition. Like, Thoughtcast is the only one. Yeah. Uh, Deathmark he, uh, is a pretty obvious one. Uh, we're not Deathmarking in Edge Champion, so. And then two Garrick Relentlesses, which, although I like the effect, he's just a little too slow, I think, in this matchup. I agree. Um, I actually don't have a whole lot for this matchup. Uh, I do want the fourth Edge Champion and uh, two Spell Scouts to help protect my guys from his removal. I'm just going to cut the Steel Overseers. Uh, I think they're, they they worked out that one game that I won, but it was like st still feels a little slow, and just like really bad against uh, Infest. Like if I don't already have an active Overseer, Infest is still going to kill everything. So I'd much rather just have something that will live through it, um, or try to get some counters on my Edge Champion. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, we are back with game three, and I am on the play since I got a little flooded in game two. But I did keep a little. I, I kept a sketchy one, so I kind of deserved it. So, this uh, this hand um, actually, I feel like this hand is very good. So I am going to keep it. So this hand is, I don't think it's very good at all. Um, like it has a mixture of spells and lands, but we're starting. Like we're not doing anything until turn two. Um, and, and like even then, like we don't have the right mana to cast this card. These aren't that great against him. So, like this is just kind of a very awkward hand in general. And I think we can do better than this. So I'm gonna ship this one back. That this might be a mistake. It's pretty close, but um, 
I just think on the draw, like I'd rather have a hand, like we have no removal or anything. I'd rather have a, a more interactive hand. So go ahead and send that one back. If he just has like a galvanic blast for my dark confidant along with anything, you know, we're just not gonna win. So also I don't think Liliana is particularly great against him, but our hope in these post-war games is to set up situations where it is. Yeah. Like, try to infest his board and then hit him with a Liliana or something. Alright. Six it is. Um, yeah, this hand is definitely better, I think. So, um, it's it's still not great, but it's better. We'll keep it. All right. Go. Okay. Could have been better, but what do you gotta do? Your turn. Let's see here. So we've got. Okay. So I can I can either this or this, and I think that I'm just going to go with this for now. So I'm just going to cast the plating, equip your helicopter, and tag you for five. All right, we are down to fifteen already. So I, I'm going with this play over a, a different option, just because it, um, like, we have another creature in case he removes this one, and I have this as well. So. Ugh. All right, that's not a good draw at all. Um, at this point, we are like we're pretty behind, um, but unfortunately, the best we can do is just play a dark confidant. So, your turn. So that's a pretty good draw. So I think we're going to start this turn off with a thought cast. Okay. It's actually very good. So I'll play a land. Yep. And I'm actually just going to Cast an Arcbound Ravager. I'm going to activate my Do I want to give him one point of damage here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Yeah, I'm just going to attack with this ornithopter. Alright. So one, one, two, two three, three, four, four five, five, six. So I got two nine. Mm -hmm. And then I'll pass the turn. All right, Dark Confidants, Burden Catacombs. We are definitely in a bind at this point, <laughs> to say the least. You don't say. I, I actually do say. Uh, we'll attack with Dark Confidant. I will decline to block. Okay. 18. And we are basically just dead. So our only line is to cast Infest. So we'll go to 8, get a, get a Swamp. And infest. So, and that's just minus two, minus two. Yeah, like Arcbound Ravager is like basically the worst card he could play there for us, because he gets to play around this infest. So I'm just gonna sack here. Okay. And then. Sack the Ravager to himself and put the counter on my Ornithopter. 
Okay. And then infest happens. And it's your turn. On a draw card. Okay. And then I activate this. Sure. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Dead. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's, uh, Next card, boom. Ah. Didn't have another one. Well, did not have another one. All right, back for game four. Uh, last one was pretty thorough beating, as they say. Um, well, you did mulligan, and I had a very good draw. Yeah, so. basically that was like the kind of game where like you just get affinity, as they say, where you, you don't really have much uh, to do about it. So this hand is kind of awkward. Uh, we're definitely keeping it. But uh, this card is much worse in our hand because we don't have a fetch land. So normally we would want to lead on this card, but I think we're actually going to lead on this one instead, uh, just because we don't have any way to take advantage of this, and we want to try to like disrupt his draw as much as possible, and maybe like keep him from having a super explosive start. So didn't even ask me if I was keeping my hand. Uh, are you keeping your hand? Keep, oh, well, now that I really have an Inquisition, I have to have to, okay. have to rethink it. I mean, I'm definitely going to keep it. It's it's much worse than Inquisition, but uh, again, at least it's not a thought sees. All right, Inquisition, yeah. All right, he has the old thought cast hand again. Um, so we have a Nexus, a Citadel, Ornithopter, Drum, Blast, and Cast. And I'm missing something. Um, I think that like these are the hands that I'm supposed to be mulliganing with this deck, but I'm not sure. I'm sure more experienced Affinity players will let us know in the comments. All right, so. I think the Ornithopter is like the pretty obvious pick here because it shuts out his Springleaf Drum and makes his Mox Opal like significantly worse. Um, yeah, like I think taking Ornithopter here like really hurts his hand a lot, so we're gonna take that. And it's your go. All right, well, that was a good card. Memnite, awesome. Okay, so it's like an ornithopter. A cast. Uh, yep. <coughs> I'll pass. Okay, draw. All right. I'm going to go ahead and shock myself here, down to 18, and play Dark Confidant. Uh, the reason I shock myself is because it just opens my next turn up to, like, so many different draws by having that versus, like, playing this, which just is really awkward here. So, um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. All right. Safety four damage. He did his job. All right. All right, so... That's not a bad draw at all. So I'm going to play this. And we are just going to battle for one. OK, 17. And then we're going to play this. Yep. And then I'll pass the turn. Draw. Um, that's not, well, it's, it's not great, but could definitely be worse. Uh, as for us, though, our line is definitely going to just be um, Playing a Dark Confidant and a Death Rite Shaman. And then passing the turn back. All right, well, it's an interesting hand we have here. Fortunately, his draws have been really good, so. Um, but when, we, when I saw his opening hand with Inquisition, I thought we were like a super favorite to win this one, but. Yeah, drawing the Ravager and then hitting that midnight off the top to let me play everything on turn one was really good. All right, so 
And you have two cards? Yes. All right, so I can... So I'm just doing a bunch of math here. That's this, this card is very good at provoking math. So I can, I have a couple different options. That's pretty ambitious. So I think that I'm just going to play this. Okay. And then so I can poison him for two here. I think that's the right play. So we'll activate. Okay. I'll attack and pump. Okay, I take two poison. And then I will. Sacrifice. Okay. Sure. Um, and then I'll pass the turn. All right, start confidant, marsh flats, and draw for turn. So since I had this other opal and the blink moth, it's interesting that I, I actually could ni have nined you last turn with right. poison, just by going all in on the ink moth nexus. So here, this ornithopter stopped you from losing. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, if you didn't draw memnite, hey, then far, far, far different. What a shut up, BBD. Far, far different game. Uh, <coughs> play that Marsh Flats. That's the one you revealed from the Bob, right? Yep. And we will simply play a Death Ride Shaman. And pass the turn. There's no reason to play this at this point in time. It doesn't do anything for us, so. So now that he has mana available, and you have two cards. Yep. So I think at this point that you just need to animate this guy. Sure. I will attack you. Uh, no blocks. So I'm just going to attempt to pump. Okay. That resolves. All right. Go to four. So, like, we're kind of in a game of, like, cat and mouse here, where if he, like, tries to go all in on his Ravager and I kill his Nexus, then he just loses the game. But I can't try to kill his Nexus because then, the he, can, cause then it, he can yeah. go all in on his Ravager to save it. So it's, it's kind of an interesting back and forth. And I'll pass the turn. All right. So we're at 17. Um, he's still at 20. And since we have two Deathrite Shamans, I think we're fine to, like, I think we want to start trying to race versus, like, we can gain life or we can do two to him. And I think at this point we want to just do two to him. Like, he's killing us with poison right now. So we're going to go ahead and exile your uh, Thought Cast, which we want to try to keep that Galvanic Blast in there because it's an instant. And it will make our Tarmal Voice bigger if we draw one. Uh, and I will also crack this, go to 16... And get a overgrown tomb. Hmm. I just realized a, a mistake that I just made. Man, these cards all have you such unique interactions. It's awesome. All right, cut if you'd like. Man. Ugh. All right, 
something sweet for Bob. Burden catacombs. And we'll draw for turn. Wish we had take backs. I played my last turn a little different. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that was an interesting draw. Um, it's actually a very good draw. We'll play that Verdant Catacombs. There's two cards in hand. Certainly an interesting decision. I don't know what's in his hand, but it's, it's probably, he probably has another land that he's not playing to keep our tectonic edge turned off. Uh, the last card, I'm not sure, actually. It could just be two lands. Uh, it could be another Mox Opal or something of that regard. Uh, At any rate, uh, we're not really getting any value out of the cards in our hand here. So uh, I'll go ahead and play Liliana. And we will both discard a card. So we'll see what happens from that. All right, I'll discard Marsh Floods. Yep, so he had another land that he's, he's holding back to keep our te tectonic edge at bay. Uh, we're gonna crack Burden Catacombs, go to 15, search up a swamp and I could also just make him sack Memnite but that seems pretty loose I'd rather kill his Memnite than make him sack a creature which would uh, like force him to use his Ravager or or blow up one of his own lands to do so so uh, and cut, and I'm going to exile your Dark Steel Citadel. Are you sure you wouldn't rather keep just keep an artifact in? Oh yeah, yeah. I'll exile my own land. Yeah, that makes sense. And I'll play a Fulminator Mage. Sure. And pass the turn. So basically, like we could have played Liliana a few turns ago, but. If we don't bluff a removal spell, he just kills us. So we have to always like bluff it. Um, now that we have a Fulminator Mage, we have an answer to his uh, Ink Moth Nexus, so we're not just dead to it. Yeah, so I definitely misplayed my last turn. I should have done what you know I, I had planned on doing in the first place. Um, so... Uh, it's very unfortunate. So we're going to float a mana. Okay. Sack it to my Ravager. Sure. And play this other Ink Moth Nexus. That okay. I sh should be in play from last turn. <laughs> I'm in a much better position. And I'll use the floated mana to activate this. Okay. And then I will attack. Liliana with the Ravager and you with the Ink Moth Nexus. So we have an interesting decision here. We can keep a Deathrite Shaman. Uh, we can either chump his Ravager with our Deathrite Shaman to keep our Liliana or we can just uh, let his Ravager kill our Liliana. I think we want to keep our Liliana because it's it'll be an important part of our game plan depending on what we draw. So I will go ahead and like I don't want to I don't want to double block or anything like that because he can just sack his Springleaf Drum or whatever to his Arcbound Ravager. And I need to keep Fulminator Mage around. And I think Dark Confidant is very important right now because we have to draw some removal spells or we're going to lose. So I'll go ahead and block your Ravager with my Deathrite Shaman. I will 
uh, pump the Nexus. Okay. Uh, I will go ahead and go to six poison. We can't uh, mage his Nexus here because then he just kills us with the other Nexus next turn. We have to keep our <coughs> like removal fort alive. So. And then I will pass the turn. Okay. Come on, Dark Confidant. Something sweet. Marsh Flats. And then draw. Yeah. I should have used this for the pumping and leave back the Obol. I'm just playing uh, it's pretty terrible. I will Inquisition. Target? You. Is it target players? Target yeah. player, it does. All right. He has a Blink Moth Nexus. Interesting. Uh, we will go ahead and play our Marsh Flats and then... Well, actually, do we want to... He can't play that Blink Moth Nexus right now, so I think we actually make him sac a creature here. Yeah, yeah, we will make you sac a creature. Uh, by making him sacrifice a creature, we get to uh, maybe we get to use Liliana to do that again next turn. So I'll float a mana. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll enter combat. Actually, I probably should have just activated this and sacrificed it. Hold on, let me decide if that's better, because then I can play my Nexus. actually better. I'm going to sacrifice this okay. instead. So I'm at 15, you're at 18 right now, is that true? Mm -hmm. uh, I will attack you. You have no mana right? floating right now. Uh, send in for two. 16. So you get 16. Uh, leaving death right back in case I need to block Memnite to keep Lily on it too. Um, we will pass the turn then. Activate both of these. Okay. And then I'm going to send these two at you and this at Liliana. Sure. <coughs> so at this point, it's again Death Rider Liliana. And I think Death Rite is more important here uh, for racing, for one, and also. Um, well, let's see. We would make him sack Mem Knight. I guess he's tapped out right now. So theoretically, if we draw a removal spell, we can get his Mem Knight and then Liliana his Arcbound Ravager. But we're still... Like, we're still facing down lethal from the Nexus is that way. But we do have to... Well, yeah, we, we, we would still be facing down lethal from Nexus. And Death Rite presents a reasonable clock at this stage. I think we're going to let Liliana die. That, that could turn out to be a mistake, but I think that's probably the right line. And then I just have to take... Well, I could... Yeah, I have to take two here because he can just sack to Ravager. So, no blocks, no fucks. Go to eight poison. Go. Um, and we'll go ahead and exile. Galvanic Blast? Uh, Inquisition of oh, no. Coastal Luck. Yeah. 14. So hopefully we draw something relevant now. Bob has 
Um, and I think we actually I was say, should you fetch any? Yeah, should I think you we fetch on my end steps. So you can get overgrown to him. I only have two in the deck. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and fetch now just to improve our odds by a little bit. We have oh, and you have one. You have one more swamp, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. We have no value from. Um, like we don't get any value out of fetch lands other than like hitting the right mana, so uh, it's definitely worth doing. Man, I've played this game so poorly. <laughs> I know oh. that's that's not what you want to hear when you're turning from lethal and have to peel, but <laughs> I definitely have. It's it's to I feel like it's t to this point because I played it very poorly. I had a lot of other options that I could have made, but I'm seeing like the turn after I make the wrong option. All right, something good, something awesome. Thank thank you. That is exactly one of the cards that we need to hit. So I go to twelve, um, and then I draw for turn. Okay, that wasn't that great, but. Um, So, yeah. Go ahead and attack for four. Ten. Switch you to ten. Um, I have to go ahead and kill his Ravager right now, I believe. Actually, no, that seems wrong. Hmm, it's interesting. Don't want to show what we have. If he kills Ravager now, he makes a big Mem Knight. Could also kill his Opal, which prevents him from activating Blink Moth Nexus, which I don't think is relevant. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and. Arc, well, Abrupt Decay is Arcbound Ravager. Sure. And I will pass the turn to you. I'm at, tw I'm at 8 poison, 12 life. Alright, so... This is interesting. So I can. Straight eight poison. I have one card. Correct. Ten. You have to use your full mana mage, otherwise you're dead. Activate both. Okay. And I will attack. I think that I also want to attack with my Memnite here. Two Inquisition and Rub Decay. I, I also messed this game up. <laughs> Made a pretty pretty big mistake, so. So. Yeah, I'm also going to. I'm also going to attack with my Moon Knight. Okay, uh, I will go ahead and Fulminator Mage when your ink off nexus is. And take four and a poison, so I go to eight and nine. If you hadn't killed my Ravager, you'd have been dead. Because <laughs> I could play Tap Man and sack it before you can. Yep. And then 
that was past turn. Um, I think, let's see, we're at 8, he's at 10. I think we're still going to go for the damage route. Uh, I'll exile, let's see, there's two instants now, and there is... One sorcery. One sorcery, so I will exile your Galvanic Blast, which you had 8. All right. Draw a Dark Confidant, go to 6. And then draw for turn. Okay, that was reasonable. Send in. Yeah, send him in. Six. You have six. Play the other one. And. Play this. Your turn. One card? Mm hmm. That's a good draw. So he has to have a dismember here, otherwise he's just dead to my ink mop nexus. And I just have to make it so that I don't die on his next turn. But he is going to have two bob triggers, so he could just kill himself. I also have two death rights, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're probably just not going to kill yourself with the death rights. So I think that I'm going to activate. Okay. Yeah, I'm dead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like I didn't play. I, 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 I drew the third Nexus there, so I, I, like even if you have Dismember, I, I still feel like I'm good. Yeah. It's like a Nexus. Well, I, just I actually champion, but actually like you can just kill you with Death Rites, but. Oh yeah, I'm at six. Yeah, you're at six. Like, I could have played this other Death Rite a turn earlier, but I thought that you had access to one more mana than you did, so, th uh, so that I had to, I thought I had to bluff a removal spell there, but I actually didn't, because you couldn't pump the Nexus. Yeah. So that was a mistake. Uh, it didn't end up mattering, I still would have lost, but yeah, I mean, I, those I two points could have mattered, yeah. Like, I would have been able to progress, I would have progressed a lot better than what I did there if I would have been... If I, if I would have realized that I could have been sacking lands to my Ravager to play more lands. Yeah. All right, well, we're back on my Mold of Five. All right, this is, I consider this to be Justice because the Affinity deck is very inconsistent and CVM has not had to mulligan very much, so we're finally, we're finally playing a game that is going, going my way. I'll so. keep. Great. I hope your hand is awful. I'm going to play a Deathrite Shaman off of a Swamp and go to 19. Uh, I could also lead with this, but on a mold of five, it's unlikely that he gets to empty his entire hand on turn one. So, and if he does, it's probably not a very good hand. So, well, that was a pretty good draw. Lucky. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. I had plans for that guy. I'm sure you did. <laughs> Did not involve him being dead. All right, we will draw a card. Um, that's kind of what the doctor was looking for. So I want to pull the trigger on this. And actually, that might be the line we take. I think, yeah, I think we do this right now when we can get value from it and hopefully get like a etch champion out of his hand or something equally scary. So I'll inquisition you. Spell Sky, Glimmer Void, okay. Here we go. So I'm fine with everything we just saw there. Hopefully we draw a land and can jam this signal pest, okay? 18. Go ahead. I guess at this point we will just play a Dark Confidant and say go. Oh god. I was ready for you to infest me. <laughs> I would have been insane. All right, and the hits just keep coming. Yep. 
Uh, take two. 16. Go ahead. All right. How about something sweet? Dark Confidant. Go. A land would be very nice. I'm not going to lie. So, I think I'm just going to hold this. Uh, taking three? Yep. Thirteen. Go ahead. All right. Take one. Down to twelve. Draw. Ugh. Wow, that's just gross. So do you have one or two infests in your hand? Three. <laughs> Cheating. All right, well, we'll play that Deathrite Shaman. And we will attack with Dark Confidants. 18. Go. I will take Thoughtcast into Archbound Ram. Sure, I'm sure you will. I'll take a land of any type. Well, you got a land. Once. All right, he's on the same plane again. Uh, we're actually going to uh, pay some life here and dismember his Blink Moth Nexus. So we're going to take four from the dismember and one from the Ornithopter, which puts us at seven. Uh, we're taking a lot of damage, but we do have Death Right to gain some life back if we need to. And I want to hit the Blink Moth Nexus to like stifle his ability to cast spells. Oh, man. I feel like there's some bad news coming. I'll pass. All right. So, like, I could play this, but if he happens to, Wait. like, draw. Mm, actually, I should have played this. I played this. Okay. I thought that you could infest into Abrupt Decay, but you don't have enough now. I do not. Okay. You have one card in hand? Okay, we'll go ahead and attack for three. Fifteen. Shoot a fifteen, and I'll play a Liliana and make you sacrifice a creature. Liliana? So this, um, like, really shuts off his ability to attack us and the like. Go. Even if he has a plating here, it's still, like, just three points of damage. Not nearly as scary as it could be. champion. Go ahead. Uh, we will flip a treetop village. Dark Confidant has been very kind to us. that I should have just did that last turn, actually. Yeah, that was a mistake. Hmm. Start out by attacking for two with Dark Confidence. So you go to 13? Oh. I don't block there because if he has an Abrupt Decay for this, let me just trade and I am way far behind. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have an untapped land or we would really blow him out this turn. But uh, we'll go ahead and pick up Liliana, uh, having us both discard a card. And I think we discard... Um, I think we discard this. As awkward as that seems. So, yeah, we'll discard this one. Culminator Mage, Ravager, sure. Uh, and I will now cast Infest. It sucks to like just trade off our two guys there with that Infest, but his board is pretty miserable, so your turn. And uh, we're actually at a real threat of dying to our own Dark Confidant, so. 
Plating. All right. I guess it's a good thing you had it in fast. <laughs> so if we draw a land that taps for a color, which we did not. You just have like a double abrupt decay? Maybe. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, I guess we'll play a Fulminator Mage. Uh, I guess we have to tap like this. And we're going to pass the turn. Uh, I'm not going to take up Liliana because I like all the cards in my hand a lot. OK. Link Moth Nexus. Draw. All right. That was what the doctor ordered. Uh, I'll attack with Fulminator Mage. Zero to 11. I will decay your cranial plating. And then I will decay your Springleaf Drum. And then I will go to my, go, yeah, go to the end of turn. Uh, at the end. It's at end of turn. Yeah, so, OK. Yep. I'll have to wait this. Um, I will. I'll go ahead and pull my image. It. Go. Ahead. Go. All right. Get a six. Get a swamp. Uh, I'll go ahead and cast Fulminator Mage. Uh, oh wait, I had to cast both of the Chaos. I don't know. That should not still be in my hand. <laughs> um, I'll make us both discard a card. Discard your hey. activate troop top and attack for three. Here we go. And I'm just dead. Okay. All right, we are here for the conclusion of our epic uh, infinity affinity. <laughs> affinity. Uh, to affinity and beyond. The old buzzkill light year there. So yeah. against uh, black green Dwayne Johnson. So uh, CVM very luckily won three to two. Super lucky to win. I, mean, but I don't think it was very lucky. In fact, I think you got ranched. It's uh, I don't know the cream of the crop for jokes right there. <laughs> pretty good. Uh, I definitely feel like the match was closer um, than I expected it to be. I thought that that I was going to have a little slider edge than I did. Yeah. And I, to be fair, that last game, I almost killed you on my Stains Mold of Five, so <laughs> I don't know. Like, you have awesome sideboard cards. If you draw them, uh, the game changes quite a bit. Right. Like, I had Infest Game 3, but you just had the nuts. So it was too slow. It didn't matter. Uh, if I was on the play that game, it would have mattered, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was too slow there. Like, Infest was very good in game five, though. Uh, we got to see like how, how good it can be. Uh, yeah. Fulminator Mage was obviously very awesome uh, every time I drew it. Oh, yeah. So the more of those I draw, the better I feel in the matchup. Because really, I just lost to your lands every single time. Like I lost to Edge Champion in game one, but uh, in post-board games, it's much harder for me to lose to Edge Champion when I have infests and yeah, definitely. more ways to deal with stuff like that. So Yeah, I feel like the, the three games that I won is just a very good um, showing of the different angles that the, the deck can attack you on. So game one I won with uh, Edge Champion, and yep. then the next game that I won was just like Ornithopter Plating, hit you for five on turn two. Yep. And then the next game was just like grinding you out with Mining Club Nexus. So like the deck can attack on very very three different angles. So it's like protection from everything, hyper aggression, and then just grind you out with lands. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like this, uh, the rock deck's a little ill-prepared maybe to deal with a lot of it. Like. I, I know if I was playing this deck in a PTQ, I would have like creeping corrosion on my sideboard, 100. Like, Definitely. you just need ways to answer, like all the cards that they play. Like, you can't try to rely on um, like spot removal spells alone. It's just not good enough, especially when your spot removal spells are either sorceries or don't hit lands. So, yeah, uh, that, that's actually just a, a very good point. So recently we had the World Championship, which is where we pulled these decks from. As well as we pulled our list from last week for Standard when we, when we did our video last week. Yep. And so the World Championship is a very unique tournament where it had you know a certain number of slots. And people knew who were all playing in the tournament, so you could kind of build your deck to fight an expected metagame. Whereas in just like a normal PTQ or an Open, that's not the case. So a lot of people are pulling their decks like this from the World Championship. And they're just, it, the sideboards and the deck cards in the deck just aren't broad enough 
to, to fight what they're going to see at a larger tournament. Yeah, I agree 100% with it. Like, um, when, they're, when they were building this deck, like, I don't know exactly what went through the thought processes, but they probably weren't expecting to play against a lot of affinity. Yeah. Like, there, are, there aren't any actual direct affinity hate cards in the sideboard. So they probably expected to play, like, you know, like the Wrench Mines and things, like, probably against a lot of blue-white style decks, maybe Birthing Pod type decks. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think moving forward, like, with the deck, I would definitely provide, like, Creeping Corrosion, I think, is probably the best option, but uh, maybe there's, there's other cards as well that, that do the same thing and are better. I'm not entirely sure. I'd have to, yeah. to see. But, yeah, like, I, I think you definitely want something, because like, any PTQ you play, you're going to run into Affinity. So. Definitely. So, do you think Affinity would be a good choice for somebody playing in a PTQ? Uh, it's hard or, to say. Or in an IQ that a lot of shops run run modern IQs. Um, I think the deck, it, like I think if you're proficient at playing, it's a good choice. Like as you saw from our games, like there's actually a lot of decisions to be made, Definitely. both playing with and playing against Affinity. And I think Affinity gains a lot of edges from their opponent not being familiar with the matchup. Like for example, like, if I had tapped out to play the Liliana that one game, and just not realized that you could like if I didn't realize that you could kill me with your Ink Moth Nexus by sacking everything to Ravager, I might just tap out for Liliana. Mm -hmm. But since like, you know, and, and that's something that comes with like experience playing the matchup or whatever. But like that's something that gives you an edge as an affinity player if your opponent like makes those kinds of mistakes. Definitely. But at the same time if your opponent's like very good at playing the matchup, you also lose a lot of edge. And I think uh, the blue-white-red deck that's very popular right now is kind of a bad matchup for Affinity. Yeah, definitely. So that's definitely a consideration. Like, their electrolyzes and things like that are extremely good against you. Yeah, for sure. So, like, I, I, de I, de I definitely enjoyed playing the deck. Um, but, like, uh, those are all valid points. Like, I don't think that I would play it in a PTQ um, just because it doesn't seem like that deck can be blue-white-red at all. Yeah, uh, the the Black Greens de deck is a deck I would definitely consider playing in a PTQ. I'm not sure that I would. Uh, it's kind of like playing Jun from the last season, where uh, you're just like a good deck that has like a lot of like 50% style matchups. Mm -hmm. And uh, my personal experience is like I tend to go 5-2 or whatever, 6-2 a lot in PTQ with decks like that, because like you run into the, you run into the one round where you just don't draw the right cards, or your opponent just goes over the top of your strategy and you can't win. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you're going to win most of your rounds just by having better cards. So uh, it's definitely a consideration as well. Um, I'm not sure I would necessarily recommend it, but it's definitely like, it seemed like a very solid deck from when I played it. Definitely. But. Well, I had t a blast playing Modern. I, I definitely think we should do some more Modern videos. Yeah, I agree. Like, uh, I know a lot of people wanted to see Modern, so yeah. hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, both of us definitely made a couple of mistakes from time to time, but yeah. uh, that's something that happens, like, until you become like intimately familiar with the decks you're playing, you're going to make a lot of those mistakes. So it was, sure. it was definitely a learning experience for both of us, and hopefully you guys learned something as well. But, uh, you know, hopefully I didn't get Thousand Island too bad this, this <laughs> match, or Caesared or whatever. But uh, we appreciate you guys watching, and uh, hopefully you will join us next Friday for another one. Definitely. Check us out next week. And, uh, like, we ended up playing Modern this week because of the, com the comments on the video. So... Feel free to comment, let us know, you know, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you want to see, and we'll make it happen. Yep.